It's it, it being 7.30, we're gonna open the meeting and this meeting is being recorded. So um, I will in fact read this little, uh, this little blurb here. It says, we're having a virtual meeting per Governor Baker's order of 312.20, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, section 30A, section 20. If you uh, wish to join this meeting, you may dial 1301. 715-8592 US and the meeting ID is 985-430-0926 or by computer video at uh, double backslash US 02 web dot zoom dot US um, backslash J backslash the uh, meeting ID number. And the meeting materials are available at uh, North Reading Government Community Planning Pages Projects Under Review section. So having said all that, we can, uh, we can move right along. Um, um, Danielle, knowing who's here, do you have a preference? Sometimes you have a preference of who's going to, who's on first? Um, or do you want to just, it looks like we have a bunch of people from the 239 North Street, so perhaps we should open with that one. Um, we can, I believe uh, the Brogans are here for their uh, plan endorsement and bond release. Okay. I don't know if that might be a, a quicker one, um, okay, or, but it's... Uh, no, we can, we can do that. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I have very, I have, I have my uh, iPad with all the information on it, so... <laughs> I wasn't sure if anyone had any questions. I've placed um, the copy of the final Mylar from their subdivision plan, which was approved um, in 2018, but hadn't yet been endorsed. Um, they have met all the requirements for the plan being endorsed. Um, that was the final plan that was given to us by the engineer. Um, they have submitted their statutory covenant and supplementary restrictive covenant. Right, um, right. And they've given a site opening bond, although they are also, as a separate matter, um, requesting for us to to waive that. But we can we can take care of the votes first to um, accept the covenants and the and endorse the plans. Okay. Well, before we do that, we I assume that we need um, well we need four votes. Is that correct on this? Yes. So I think we four of us are here. I see Ryan. Yeah, is here, Ryan's here. And Chris and you. Ryan, you need to unmute, Ryan. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dave's unmuted. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, are you, uh, if you can hear us, please unmute. There we go. Hey, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Okay. Um, are there any questions or concerns on this, on the 30, um, 35 Cedar Street, um, on, the, uh, on the conditional approval? Um, hearing none, uh, do we have a motion for this? Yes, right. there's, I can read it if you'd like. Let me just find, my, oh, where did the motions go? Oh, oh, here they are. Ryan, do you have the motions? Do you see them? Oh, I, I saw the separate, oh, I didn't see the separate folder. Yeah, I got yeah, it. Okay, would you care to do the motion for 35 Cedar Street, please? Mm -hmm. I move the Community Planning Commission vote to endorse the subdivision plan entitled Definitive Plan and Cedar Street Extension, dated April 26, 2018, last revised September 11th, 2018, drawn by William Sprays. Okay, I have a motion or a second? Second. Okay, second by Dave. Uh, and you can tell it was Dave because the little yellow bar went off underneath him, so. Um, okay, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Looks uh, let the record show five in favor, no opposed. Four um, in favor. Pardon? Four in favor. Yes, I said four in favor, no opposed, um, as we only have four members at this time. Okay, so moving on. And the... Um, Cedar Street decision here. Um, what was the, uh, there was a question about the uh, bond. 
Um, yes, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Brogren had requested uh, to waive the five thousand uh, dollar site opening bond. Um, that would be separate from security for the subdivision um, because they have submitted um, covenants. Um, but they were asking if the CPC would consider waiving uh, just the site opening bond. And I don't know if they would like to say anything. I know they're on. Um, I mean, is there a, a, a reason why you wanted to remove that bond? I mean, that bond, what does that bond basically generally cover? I mean, in this, it, 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 covers, it covers basically the initial work on the site? On it the really site. covers... It, it, the initial access to the site. public property, um, but I believe DPW has their own street opening bond, which would mm -hmm. also cover right. something similar. Um, I don't know of an instance where we've actually used a, a site opening bond. I mean, we generally just give it back. Um, it isn't security for the subdivision, so none of the items, um, so they would right. be covered as far as having their security because they have the covenants. So. Um, Okay, well, I guess I was looking for our exposure on it. Uh, if the DPWs, I know the DPW makes you do a, a, a street, an opening bond, makes you do a bond as well. So do you believe that uh, that covers everything that they would need? I would think that it would. I, I just, I don't really know. I know it, it was it was a condition in our, in our decision, but I don't really know what we would use it for, given that we would have the other bond when the time came. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just, I think primarily that bond is for any um, any public utilities or public areas uh, such as streets that may get disturbed in the process of opening the site. For example, if there was a sidewalk there that you had to cut an opening for a driveway through the sidewalk, it covers that um, replacement or repair of the sides of that sidewalk, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Uh, so I think the original, it, it, it has to do with the original access, but the DPW bond does cover the same thing as well, or similar, similar things, um, uh, the, access bond. Oh, yeah. What, what, I think I was muted. Warren. Can you hear yes. it? No, we did not hear you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I guess where they would be digging up would be right at the fire hydrant. And uh, it's basically in the woods. It's off the road. There's no sidewalk. They, won't, they wouldn't be disturbing the, uh, the existing cul-de-sac at all. Right. But in, the, but in the case of a situation where you were coming in off an existing street, where you would be cutting a sidewalk and all that, that's the intent of that bond, is to protect the infrastructure as you open the site. So, your, so it appears that your site doesn't have any of those issues, and that may be the reason that we could look at... Uh, not requiring that bond. Correct. So, um, is this is there a motion required for this? Do you have a motion for that, Danielle? Um, I I don't have a motion for oh. You know what? I don't, but I can make one. And the motion would be: I move that the community planning commission uh, vote to waive the five thousand dollar site opening bond um, required for the thirty five Cedar Street subdivision. Okay, uh, would you so move there, uh, Ryan? Ryan, you're muted again. I so move. Okay, thank you. And so then I will need a second. Mr. Pierce, I second that. And Mr. Radloff will second it. Okay, is there any further discussion? Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 I right, let the record show four in favor, no opposed, <coughs> as we have only four members at this time. Um, so I believe um, that takes care of your issues, Mike and everybody. Great, right, thank you. Uh, okay. Quick quick question. Yep. Mr. Brogan, I'm sorry, what's your first name? I forget. Michael. Michael, Michael. thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay, uh, are you all set then? Uh, you're all set for the well, next uh, so. yeah. Thank hey, you very thank much. You. Okay, okay. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank Be you. careful Bye. when you work out there. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, let me see. I guess uh, we can go.
back to, to uh, let's see, 239 North Street, probably be best uh, section. The public hearing was scheduled for 7.30, so we're past that, so I suppose we can move right into that. Um, so let me do that, okay. <coughs> Okay, 239 North Street. We have an uh, engineer or somebody who's uh, uh, represented this. Yep. Uh, right here. Okay, Mr. Davis. Yes. Should we, I'm sorry to interrupt, but should we read the public hearing notice? Yeah, um, I was just trying to find out if we had everybody here for it before we started the process. <laughs> that was all. Um, okay, um, public hearing notice. Do you, uh, Chris, you want to read it? Sure, I can read it. Okay. Notice is hereby given that the North Reading Community Planning Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, December 15th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the application of Benevento Family Limited Partnership for a site plan review for the property located at 239 North Street, plan entitled Proposed Office Warehouse Building 239 Main, uh, 239 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts. Drawn by Dana F. Perkins Incorporated. You may participate in this hearing online at https colon backslack spashlax us 02 web dot zoom dot us backslash j backslash nine eight five four three zero zero nine two six by phone one nine two nine two oh five six zero nine nine meeting id nine eight five four three zero zero nine two six or by one tap mobile one nine two nine Two zero five six zero nine 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 eight five four three zero zero nine two six hashtag US New York meeting ID nine eight five four three zero nine two six. Chris, could you repeat that? <laughs> yeah. Ryan, you can read it for yourself, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> uh, a copy of the plan has been on file yes. and viewed by visiting the Community Planning Commission website. Good. Thank you. I see why I had you read it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, um, okay, so uh, I lost my uh, my engineer. Okay, there you are. Yeah. Okay, um, um, Ethan, do you wish to make you know, have a presentation for us? Sure, I can. Uh, I can start if you'd like. Okay, please. Okay. Um, first of all, it's nice to finally see everybody. Um, um, my name is Ethan Davis. I'm with Dana F. Perkins. Um, we're here on behalf of Benevento Family Limited Partnership uh, to propose the, um, some work at 239 North Street. Uh, most of you know that 239 North Street is located just west of the town hall. And it's the old, uh, the old two-family farmhouse. Um, it's still there. Uh, it's currently vacant. Um, it sits on about 97.5 acres um, and it was last used as a contractor's yard. There was a, a logger was in there for a while and He's no longer there, but that's the last use in it. Um, the applicant is proposing uh, to build a personal office with an attached garage and warehouse. Um, it's about a footprint of approximately 6,000 square feet. Uh, the building will be used by um, our client and his family uh, to conduct personal business, uh, as well as store personal vehicles um, on the site. Um, this office is not an extension of the operations that are held in Wilmington. Um, and nor is it uh, the quarry operations going to be extended into the town of North Reading from Wilmington. The, the building is solely for the purpose of our client and his family to, to conduct business outside of the operations in Wilmington, as well as deal with other uh, clientele that they may have. Uh, the proposed building will be serviced by public water, a private uh, septic system, a private chambered infiltration system, 
um, to, to attenuate runoff and promote groundwater recharge. Uh, <coughs> small parking area. Um, it will disturb under one acre of land. Uh, the plans were submitted in May um, and they've been revised throughout the past seven months based on uh, comments by several departments uh, as well as a peer review um, that was um, required by the, the town engineer a couple months after we submitted. Some of these revisions include uh, the revising wetland flag locations uh, by, the, uh, by the conservation agent, adding a fire hydrant and a, a, a fire suppression sprinkler system to the plans, adding a 2,500 gallon tight tank for the floor drains inside the garage, adding uh, various areas of landscaping and a sight line profile uh, to the plan set. The septic system has been approved by the Board of Health and the, uh, the majority of the peer review comments have been addressed um, by our engineering team. And um, that's basically it. We're, we did have a Conservation Commission hearing um, back in June um, and it's been continued since because they were waiting on comments from uh, your commission as well as um, information from the peer review process. So, and that's basically the highlights of, of the project as a whole. Um, if you folks have any questions, we'd of course be more, more than happy to answer them for you. Okay, um, this is a public hearing. However, I'm going to start out by asking the members of the board for any questions or comments. And is there any, any, anything um, further, Mr. Davis, from anybody else on this? Um, we do have the architect online if anybody has questions about the building. Um, another engineer from my office is online as well for uh, if there's some real technical data. I think we would like to know what the building is going to look like, you know, I mean. Uh, there's elevations, Warren. Pardon? There are elevations. Right. In my, in my, in my. Uh, in the shape yes. yes, I actually only put the elevations in today. I thought they were in with the original plan set, but they were not. Um, I don't know if Mr. Davis, if you want to, you can share your screen or I can share the screen if, sure. if as a means of showing the plans. Yeah, I can um, give it a, I can give it a shot. I okay. didn't see any elevations when I looked at this earlier, so. I, I, I didn't was see them either. The day. I, I, you're right. It was, um, I had added them later in the day. I apologize for that. Let's see. So these are the elevations that we submitted. Uh, you know, uh, I can go through one by one if you'd like. Uh, like I said, Thaddeus Masco, uh, the architect, is is on online if you have any. Uh, real technical questions. Uh, he'd be more than happy to answer them for you. This is this yeah, right here Ethan, is the front view. Sorry to interrupt, Ethan. I, no, I have I have a colored version of the front of the building, which is really what you re pretty much all that you really see from the road. Maybe I could share my screen and and sure. walk, just walk through the materials. Yep. Let me get let me get off of here. There you go. Great. Thank you. <laughs> see if we can get this. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> You've been upstaged. Can can you all see <laughs> that? Uh, can everybody see the picture of a, of the building? Yes. Yes. Yep. yes. So yeah, I, this um, it, it's it's designed to to you know fit within you know the the look and feel of the town. Uh, on the le this is what you see from the road. Uh, on the left is is kind of the office section with the with the main entry. Uh, and off, and then there's a drive through that stone arch, kind of gets you back to where most of the garage doors are that serve the the, the uh, storage part, which is on the right side. So it's natural materials, you know, uh, cedar shingle and and kind of a deeper, a uh, darker color set. The building's about 35 feet tall, um, but that eave line that you're looking at is is um, is is just 15 feet tall. So it's, it's 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 designed to kind of fit down into the ground, and as Ethan mentioned, it's uh, fully sprinkled, um, and you actually can physically uh, walk across from the office side to the to the storage side through that attic where that cupola uh, is shown. But this is the general coloration uh, that we're proposing and materials that we're proposing to use. As you know, it's it's pretty well set back. Uh, from the road um, and the length of the storage facility uh, is off is, is heading back down to the, on on the right so the impact is visual impact is actually pretty minimal you might normally expect this would have been almost a metal building but uh, mr. Benevento and his family really wanted to do a a, a nicer uh, 
more appropriate, if you will, uh, town for community, uh, job for a community like a nice town like North Reading. So I think with that, I can stop sharing. I can walk through the other elevations, but I think I think that should hopefully give you a good feel. I think this is basically what we were looking for to take a, to get an idea of what it was going to um, actually look like um, from the street. Um, but um, can I, if I could go back to Ethan for a moment, sure. On the use, the 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 actual use, I'm I'm not. You you were rather general about what was going to be stored in that building. Okay. Um, there are more specifics about. I mean, are we you know what's going to be. So so like my questions would be. Something like, is somebody going to, is a personal vehicle stored in there so somebody's coming in and out of there at 2 o'clock in the morning or? I, I, I can't, I can't imagine, can't imagine so. Um, I was, you know, there's, um, I know that the sons like to do some work on, on pickup trucks. You know, I don't know if they have um, classic cars. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it'd be something more along those lines. I don't think um, it's not going to house equipment that's going to be needed for, the operations in Wilmington. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you'll have employees from the Wilmington facility coming to this site to get equipment. I think it's yeah, more- I kind of got that from yeah. the discussion. Yeah, but, I mean, um, I don't know if, I don't know if they're storing classic cars or if they're storing motorcycles or things of that nature. Um, well, it does I, appear that they, you know, obviously there was the possibility of, the, of um, you know, mechanical work being done, which is why you got the, the uh, MDC trap in the tight tank in there. Right, so, and that, that was requested. So um, yeah. that was because it does, it, it, with having the garage doors does allow the opportunity to have vehicles in there. So they wanted to yeah. make sure that we took care of that, yeah. Right, right. So, um, so we don't really have a clear idea of what's actually going to be in and out of that building at this point. Yeah, I don't know if that, I don't, I don't know if you've had more discussions with, with Charlie about the types of vehicles that he'd want to store there. Uh, not so much, but I, I've known the Benevento family for a while and they, and they did, they, at least in the past, have had some car collection. I imagine, uh, there may be some of those cars in there. I, I think they're a fairly active family. I imagine there's things like snowmobiles and other kinds of things that might end up in there. Um, we all seem to, we all seem to collect, uh, mm -hmm. stuff, those materials, whatever. Um, but uh, what I understand is that this is not, um, as Ethan mentioned, related to their movement and operation. Um, this mention of parking in, the, you know, an RV in the buildings just to get it out of, you know, out of the weather, and a few other vehicles and and things like that. I think um, the family has other businesses besides the, the concrete asphalt business, and I think. Right. Um, to the extent that they can have a meeting in a place that's a little less active, um, which is what right. the office does for them, I think that's where they where they were headed. So let me ask you another quick question on the on the uh, that front elevation to to the right. Are those operational garage doors on the right side? Yeah, there's one. There is uh, one door. One big uh, door there, or is that yeah. two smaller ones? Uh, it's one larger door, sir. It's uh, it, the the height doesn't allow for more than a, a kind of a normal vehicle, but it's a little it's it's a it's sort of a double width door. It's a sixteen foot okay. wide door. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that that's an area they could come in and out of that without having to go out back. That's correct. They could come in and out of that that warehouse, that garage area. Right. The warehouse is column free, so it's just kind of a big open open space. Right. right. I, I I kind of figured that. Yeah. Um, Okay, so, but it just it, it's just in addition to what kind of traffic would be happening, you know, things could be coming in and out of the garage, out of that garage location, you know, uh, similar to a repair shop kind of thing, if they, even if it was just for their own personal vehicles. All right, well, I'm... <coughs> Warren? Any questions? Chris? Um, I'm not sure if it was the fire department or the police department asked what the height of the archway, because there's only one way to the back parking, and that's through that archway. Is that correct? Right. right. So I'm I'm reading the the drawings, and it looks to me like it's ten four at the at the height of the vertical, not in the center of the arch. Is that correct? Yeah, that uh, that's correct. It's thirteen feet uh, in the middle, and it and it and it drops down to the ten. Right. On the so side. I don't know if 
uh, what size fire apparatus could get through there to access the back. Um, That's one of the reasons why we, um, we added a, a fire suppression line and a hydrant at the front of the building and the buildings are fully sprinkled. We have the, with the fire code, the, once you, re once you reach the building, the fire, the rest of the buildings are accessible to within the limits, uh, in the fire code. Um, okay. So, that's, right. yeah, so, that's so how about, the smaller, how about the ambulance? Can you get through that? You can get one of the regular smaller engines through there. Yeah. You're not going to take the ladder truck through there, but you don't need the ladder truck there either. Right. The, can the ambulance get, the ambulance should be able to get through yeah. that arch then? Absolutely. Because, you know, it's not just, it's not just uh, fire. It's also, right. Right. you know, and in a situation like this, there's a lot of these things, you know, you can get yeah. injured in uh, an area like this easily. Or if they're working on vehicles, gasoline fires, things like that, accidents. Yeah. After, so. so they do. Uh, but when I looked at it, it looked to me like, and, and it looked like the fire department did address that in their comments. And it looked like they were, they did not object to it as long as there was enough room to get the engine in a, in, in perhaps an ambulance through there, which it appears that's the case. So. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or on this? Uh, what, what we have look at what we're looking at here. Yeah, I just had one comment, Warren. Go ahead, Ryan. The entrance to the left of the entrance off of North. Uh, I'm sorry, to the right of the entrance off of North Street. There's a small planting area. Is the area around that intended to be grass as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. is a that is a tricky sight line. I've gotten cut off by the log trucks a couple times in that area. So. Yeah. The the, the new entrance is is farther to the west, if you will. Um, so the sight lines is much better with the proposed, um, with the proposed entrance, but I did make sure that the, that, pro, that proposed landscaping area is set outside the sight line. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's right. The driveway is really right where that, where the planting bed is, right? Oh, almost. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're moving closer to where the, the old mailbox pedestal kind of is. I think we're, I think that mailbox is more around where the new, the new driveway is coming through. Okay, that'll be a good improvement. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. And it looks like the sight line is good looking at the sight line plan as well. So, yeah, it works out. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, Excuse, me. Excuse me. My name is Marie Pothier, and I'm a resident across the street. Okay, from could you hold on one minute, please? Hold on one minute, please. I'm going to get to that. I just wanted to make sure nobody from the board had any more questions. And if they do not, then I'm going to open it up to the public. And um, yep. Mr. Mr. Uh, Pierce. Yes, Mr. Hayden. I'd just like to say one thing. And everything I read and listening tonight, we're always talking about it's the Benevento family, this, this, and this. This is a piece of uh, industrial land that could get sold at any time. So we have to look at this property as not a, a somebody that is a family it has to be done correct because this is the first and last time we get to, to do this it's like getting sight sight line distances and this and that we need to know this to make it safe not for now but for later because this is our really one of our only chances to do this um and i understand who they are but they're as long as they own the property they're there when the property is sold they're not and that happens all the time so you know we're looking out at this property as the piece of property in the building that's being built on it and what could be looking you know what could it be after so your right, point here so, yeah you know, so your point is that this property could be sold and with garages on it it could easily become a, a car repair shop and a, something or, else or That's correct. In place or something like that, which could be a lot more noisy and a lot more impactful on the neighborhood. That's correct. Okay. You never know what could happen here. Yeah, what, I just want to make what, sure everybody knew where you were going with this. Yeah. Would that would that require a change of use, and would that would that have to bring them back to the board? I'm just asking. Well, and it's industrial. To... It's industrial. So depending upon the kind of a use that they put in there, if it met the industrial criteria for industrial, yeah, um, then it would be allowed. You know. Okay. I mean, that's yes. the, you'd have to go to the table of uses to see if whatever use is being proposed, if it's a commercial style use that fits the industrial code, then it could be done. Fair enough. So, um, so his point is well taken here. So, 
we need to make sure that we you know that we know what's actually happening here and put proper controls in place that's that's part of why we there's a public hearing here sure sure all right so um if uh, are we all set with the boards for now and i will open it up to the public and uh, when you're selected please state your name and address and ask your question to the chair and we will elicit an answer if it's possible so um i had a request from sherry is that uh, you you have a question yes so i'm sheree poffier at 236 north street so i'm across the street yep. i've been here 42 years so i'm well aware of the sound benevento makes all day long the blasting i've cracked in my windows my walls because the question i have with this new building are diesel trucks going to be there or is this something we're going to i mean i hear machinery from benevento no matter what time of year at three o'clock in the morning running while i'm sleeping so this is going to be a whole lot closer are people going to have engines running all the time while they're working on stuff? That's a big concern. I also have a concern that right now we have a tree line in between the town hall and that property. Are those trees going to go away? Is the big hill, is that going to be taken down so you have a wider open space? Are you going to use floodlights, parking lot lights? What are you going to use for lighting? Okay. And is it really cars and motorcycles stored in that building, or are you going to have other things, chemicals? And this is a generally a nice, quiet neighborhood, even though we're in between 62 and 28, but I'm kind of concerned with what's going on now. Okay, Ethan, would you care to address sure, those sure. issues? No, and I, and I, I completely understand. Um, I, I do think that the, the whole – the whole point of, of them building the office is, is for them to get away to a more quiet place. Um, they do have other uh, businesses that they, you know, and, and other business people that they're dealing with that don't necessarily have anything to do with the operations in Wilmington. Um, so I, I don't think noise will be much of an issue. Won't, won't, won't be a big issue. I know there, I think um, Sherry, we spoke before when during conservation, I know the, the logger, made an awful lot of noise as well um so yeah. obviously he, he's gone um so i imagine it being a much more serene as as far as it is an off you know there is a garage i think the whole the point of it really is the office aspect of it um you know so he, um the family has a place to go to meet with their other clients that don't necessarily have anything to do with the operations of the building um as far as as far as the the, the trees and the the hill the law line basically kind of straddles the, the middle of that hill, if you will. So a good portion of the trees are on the town line. There's actually a fence. I don't know if you've noticed the fence that's okay. high up on, on the, so that's basically the lot line, you know, for all intents and purposes. So obviously all the trees to the right are going to stay. A good portion of the trees high up on the left are going to stay as well. We're, they're proposing a retaining wall on that side of the, the garage. Um, so the, the grading won't have to cut into the hill as much as without a without a retaining wall. So, um, I mean, some trees are, are going to get cut down, um, but I think the bigger trees and that tree line are to the right of that fence, and those should stay. Um, as far as lighting, um, we're not proposing any floodlights on poles. There's going to be, and, and Thad can uh, explain more if you have more questions. There's going to be lights at the rear entrance to the, the doorways to the office, and they're going to be hidden in the soffits. Um, if I'm explaining it correctly, there is a rear door. They're going to hide the lights in the soffit so you won't see those. There's going to be, um, they call them wall packs at the exterior doors where they're required by code. Um, but there certainly won't be floodlights like you're at a, sh a shopping center, uh, things of that nature. Um, there was a word that Thad had used, and I I think I forgot to call it dark, dark sky lighting. I, if, if I'm saying it correct, that. Um, yeah, I, I think um, Ethan. The, I mean, the strategy is wherever possible is to conceal the source of the light. So the, the entrance way that's covered would have you know recessed lights, as would any doors that have a covering over them. 
the drive through, you know, up in that ceiling. So you, you just see a, a, a gentle glow of light. You don't get the, there's no glare cast. Um, the code does require us to put a light at exterior doors and we would use a, a light, a, a low lumen uh, light that would just cast downward to, to the ground. Um, yeah, there's no, it's, it's, I'm sorry, as Ethan mentioned, there's no like pole light or any kind of yeah. higher light more than just the height of the building. Okay. That uh, Sherry, that suffice for you? Um, a, a little bit. Um, I do have a question about the, the traffic. Now, I know that you say it's generally just going to be the few people in the office, in and out, and whatever business that they're going to be doing. It's a bear to get out of my driveway as it is now during the day. And, you know, it's just people coming out of that driveway ever since I've lived here, it's like a death trap because the people coming off of 62 are flying up the road. Sure. There's also no heavy trucking sign at the end of North Street. Are they going to have heavy trucks? I mean, are they going to have a ton of traffic? I, I don't think, and, and to be honest, I, I looked on, I driven down that road a hundred times and I, I've never seen the signs for heavy trucks either. But I did go look at Google Maps, and they do have one as far as Google Maps shows uh, at the, the at both ends of that North Street section. Um, so they wouldn't be bringing down heavy trucks um, because it's already, I think it's two and a half ton limit, I think. Um, and again, the building itself, the garage doors are only nine feet tall. So you're not going to be bringing in large machines anyway because they won't fit into the garage. Um, so I'm, I'm not expecting a, a lot more traffic as, you know, it's, again, I, I, I do think it's going to be more of just a few, you know, the, the father and I, th I think the two sons, you know, meeting with, with their prospective clients, with clients they have now. Um, so, I mean, there might be, you know, pickup trucks maybe in and out, you know, but, you know, I, I don't know. And I don't know how often the office would be used. It wouldn't be as everyday office. You know, I think that would still be, um, at the Wilmington facility, um, again, this would be more of a, he wants to get away from the Wilmington facility and he wants to go spend time in, in a quiet place. He lives quite a distance away from, from uh, the Wilmington facility. So I think it'd be nicer for him to have a closer, much quieter place for him to, to concentrate on other aspects of uh, all the things he needs to concentrate on. Would okay. he ever entertain the thought of leasing out part of the building to somebody else that could cause an issue or is it going to be strictly for them? I think it's going to be strictly for them. Like I said, he, um, there was a, a, a contractor there, a logger and, and, um, I, I think he preferred not to lease it out. Um, I don't, I don't think it, it, it I don't think it worked um, well enough that it, 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 uh, to lease it out makes any, any sense to him at that time. I don't want to speak for him, um, on that front, but no discussion of leasing portions of the building has come up. The, the office itself, um, is all kind of one unit. There's not, I don't, it's not like a segmented office building. And as Thad said, the, the, the garage area is kind of like an open area itself. So there's no, I don't think there's like bays with walls. So I, I don't think you'd, you'd set up shop in one and then, you know what I mean? So uh, I, I don't think, I don't think the leasing any portion of the, of the, the space would make sense. Um, I, I, yeah, Ethan, I think that's right. We would, if, if it did, we would have thought about places we might put future toilet rooms if they were to subdivide the space, but we're, the, the toilet room is really in the office um, so that you couldn't really, uh, even from a code point of view, or just practically have somebody in on the warehouse section to say at least a portion of it, um, they would have. Uh, right. Sure. All right. Thank you. Um, does I just have one. Last, I just okay. have one last question, please, and then I'll be done. Go ahead. Um, for the for the hours of operation, or if you could just let them know, this is a residential area, and that's the only industrial area. There's neighbors around here. I don't think any of them are on the call, but they have kids. Like I said, we can hear the machines running at Benevento as we can, you know, all the time now. Sure. So it would just be neighborly of them to not be like, you know, 
midnight, right. five o'clock in the morning, you know, right. stuff like that. So that would be helpful. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Yes, I do. Okay. Please say your name and address for the record, please. Go ahead, Phyllis. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I would need your name and address for the record. Yeah, I'm at 200 Martin's Landing. Okay. Okay, my question is, um, I, I'm new to the town. Um, behind the, the, the proposed um, garage and, and office building, what are they doing with the 97 acres that are behind their building? So, so right now there's, there's no plans for um, the area behind the building. The, right now, the, the, basically the entire construction area is within, there's an, like a clearing, you know, behind the existing farmhouse, and there's a, a yard behind, a graveled yard, things like that. There's basically an edge of woods, and this development basically stays within that, that edge of woods. It, it is 97 and a half acres, but a good portion of that is wetlands, um, which he would... Uh, you know, they wouldn't have any desire to do anything with anyway. And with all the, the codes and regulations, there's, I don't think there's much they could do between the wetlands to the west. Um, there might be some uplands in the middle, but then there's also, as you go farther north, you start running into um, the brook, um, where you, you, then you get to all the rivers protection and things like that. So I don't think there's any any desire to do any sort of um, construction with that, you know, in, in that area. I don't think it's, I don't think it makes much sense for them at this point. Yeah, which means that at some point they could come into that area. Well, again, I, d I don't know how much developable, uh, how much area there is to develop in the rear area. I think the majority of the rear area, especially, um, is wetlands. And how, where would I get information on that? You can look, if you look on, um, you can look at the Mass GIS website. They show, they're approximate wetlands, but they can show you a picture of what kind of wetlands you have. The, the North Reading, um, North Reading GIS, I believe, sh will show the wetland areas. So okay. you can, if you open it up, you should be able to see how much, and again, it's approximate. Um, it's done by a combination of aerial photos and um, things of that nature. Um, but you, you'll you'll see that a good chunk of it is wetlands. Okay, which which is protected by by the conservation commission. So anything within a hundred feet of the con of the wetlands is under the jurisdiction of the conservation commission, and then and further DEP, you know, as as it goes. But any any work to that you do within a hundred feet of the wetland area, um, such as this, there's wetlands on site. Um, there's rules and regulations to what you can and cannot do, how far you cannot do them from the wetlands. Um, so anything, um, like I said, there's no talk, no plans to do anything back there. Um, but should, just like this, should, should they want to do anything, they'd have to file with conservation, which we've done for this project. But um, I, I believe that the, I don't want to, there's just an, so much wetlands out there, I don't think it makes sense for him to do it. Keith, it isn't just blocking any of that development anyways. I mean, this is blocking off by doing this project that, cuts off any other North Street access anyways, right? I mean, that is the, that is the main upland access um, for that whole parcel. Um, again, I, I haven't fully investigated, you know, how big and where the parcel goes, but you're absolutely right. This is kind of, this is the way in. So this development would, would kind of be it. Yep, so we absolutely. can't, so there's no access from, from North Street to those 97 acres to I think to I think North North Street if from um, no 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 from no 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 you're right I get confused a second so North Street they only have access from North Street is only a, a you know a couple hundred feet basically from the town hall to this kind of like a, a parking area at the corner of 62 it actually goes far closer to the town hall than that the state owns a piece um, at that corner Right. So we only have a, a couple, 200 feet. And then it's basically, I don't even think it's that much. So yes, this is the very limited access um, to the, the piece from North Street. Okay, my, my next question to you is, why doesn't Benevento build this garage and a meeting place 
on the property he now owns in Wilmington. Well, I think the, <laughs> the reason why he wants to build it here is because he, he owns this, this land, and right now the land is doing nothing for him. So it's, he has a nice open area that he can build in. And he, like I, I said before, he doesn't, not all his business is, has to do with the operations of the Wilmington facility. So when he has people, again, I don't know the other businesses he's involved in, but, you know, if somebody's not involved with the operations, you know, they don't want, they're not going to be interested in going to the Wilmington site. So they can go to this nice quiet place to get away from that. And then he can entertain the, the, his business meetings there. And right now the, I mean, that site's, the house has been vacant for, I mean, I think, I think we look 2005, maybe, maybe somebody's lived there a few years off and on since the 2000s, but um, it's basically just been a contractor's yard, you know, so he's, he's basically been paying taxes on it while it just sits there and does nothing. So it's just a nice quiet spot nearby. Um, and it's just a nice place that he can handle, you know, handle different aspects of his business. Okay, um, thank you, Phyllis. Does anybody else have any questions or comments on this? Um, I have one more question. I, I think you addressed this earlier, but you, you, you don't know what kind of trucks are going to go in and out of that property on North I, Ave? I, I wouldn't call them, I don't know what type of vehicles. I, I, they're not going to be large trucks because I don't think loud, large trucks are allowed on North Street. Um, and like, I, yes, I did say it before, but that's okay. Um, the garage itself, the garage doors are only, um, like nine feet tall. So they can't be, they can't be housing these big trucks there because it's, they're just not going to fit inside the garage. Um, and again, I think the, the whole point of the, the, the development is, is so is to get away from the construction aspect of his businesses and have a quieter place where he can conduct other and in other aspects of his business, you know, yeah. so I don't think he, I don't think he'd be bringing all that, that extra noise to, cause then he'd be kind of stepping Ethan, on his own toys. Totally. Ethan, I think what might help Phyllis too, is if you, if she's online, which I believe she is, if you show the, show the elevation again, which. Oh no, that's shows. okay. No, I, I, I saw the elevation. Okay. I think my, my concern is, um, well, I have a lot of concerns about the, the noise level, and he wants to get away from it, and we'd like to get away from it, but I don't think that's possible. I mean, he's been there for a long time. I mean, I agree with Sherry, the, the first caller, that, you know, 4.30 in the morning to 11 o'clock at night is a bit much, and I'm not quite sure where you go with that, that complaint. It's not you, but where do you go with that complaint? But... I mean, um, you, you yeah. can't, I mean, to be perfectly honest, you can call the Benevento companies and, and just let them know. I mean, they're, they, like you said, they've been in town for a long time in Wilmington, but you know, they, they, they employ 120 something employees. A lot of them live in North Reading, Wilmington surrounding areas. Um, I mean, they, I know people think they're a big, huge company, but they care about the towns that they work in. Oh so, no, I, I, I totally agree. But the, the, the 430, Sure. You know, and if they could have regular office hours. But anyways, I think you answered my question. Okay. As I said, my, my concern is, are they going to encroach into North Reading, which I think would be disastrous for the environment sure. and, mm -hmm. and uh, people that live in the area. Right. So I, I, I object to them putting the garage in, but that's my personal opinion. So, all right, I'm done. Uh, all right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, anyone else have any questions or comments? Okay, um, <clears throat> am I correct in assuming uh, that we don't have any uh, outstanding issues, Danielle, on this? There are just a couple of things that are minor. Um, we went through a couple of rounds of peer review uh, with DCI. There were some very minor um, outstanding issues that I think could be clarified. Um, and I think I just detailed them in the memo. Just um, they wanted uh, some additional explanation of um, the area just to ensure that it is less than an acre of disturbance because otherwise it would trigger. Oh, so more. Well, yeah. um, and then uh, they were recommending a just a condition about needing a structural engineer for when the retaining wall is yeah. uh, designed and permitted. Um, other than that, I will check back with DCI to see if they would recommend any conditions of approval related to stormwater. Um, 
the other only other thing that I could think of was um, I know that early on when we had talked about the project, um, the only lighting had been kind of wall pack lighting. I think we know a little bit more about the kind of lighting proposed. So I would maybe recommend that we note on the plan just more information about lighting. I don't know if it has to be a full photometric lighting plan, but it should show. I, I know that there have been concerns. So yeah. yeah, and yeah. just to, there's always a condition of approval that there can't be glare onto any, uh, you know, abutting properties, right. but it would be good to know more about the lighting plan if possible. Okay. Um, we can, uh, if, is that, so if we give those conditions to them, we could uh, perhaps take a look at it for, uh, for a, some kind of decision at our next meeting? Yes, I think we could do that. The other thing was I did speak to Deputy Galvin today and I know he had given his comments. Um, he did ask me a little bit just about the entryway. Um, and he didn't he didn't write this down, but asked me um, if I wouldn't mind asking for just um, if you could run like a, a, a turning radius just for like the way in and out just for the, the, the fire trucks. He, he just wants to be sure um, of what that that mo those motions right. would be. Right. That was those were the only other um, issues that I had noted. Mr. Pierce, I got a question too. Mr. Radloff, go ahead. It, um, how, does, how does it work where we would approve with other conditions, what have you? Are they limited to uh, once they can start construction, if they then go back to Mr. Noel and, 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 and issue some sort of or submit some sort of change, can they change the height of that breezeway, the drive through, can they change the height of the doors into the shop, which is 13 feet high, to kind of alter, you know, what? If they, if they make, Dave, if they make any changes uh, that are substantive, they'd have to come back for a modification. Now, whether it's a major modification, which would require notification, or a minor modification, which is something we can handle internally, um, it's ba it would be based on the size and the impact of the change. So, for example, if they if they decided to put 14 foot doors up there and raise that arch up to 14 feet, so they could get a big truck in there, why that would be considered, I think, a major change because it would change the kind of vehicle that they could put in there, and that would have to probably go back to public hearing. Uh, but if they wanted to change the 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 uh, color on the outside of the doors, or if they wanted to change the material of the siding or something like that, that might be considered a minor modification, which would require just a hearing with us. Yeah, I agree. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, Warren? Yes, Chris. So uh, I agree with what uh, Danielle was talking about, the lights. Those wall packs, <laughs> if you use the wrong ones, they're worse than having down lights in, in, the, in the parking lot because they're going to shine away from the building. They need to be hooded. So they, they, yes, exactly. Yes. Shielded, hooded, hooded, hooded you know. Packs so that right. they do exactly what you said they do. They don't shine out, they shine down. Shine down, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Um, sure. And they should all be uh, LEDs too. I would expect you guys to up on that part of the Well, the I deal. would expect that from a financial point of view. Yeah, absolutely. The Benevento family would not be interested in wasting money on paying for incandescent that's, bulbs at this point. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All the electricity to run them. <laughs> yeah, well, that's primarily what I meant was the yeah. power to run them. Out, of, out of character here. However, the color of such light, if it's a cold color versus It can be dark, very bright. Yes. It can be very white and very uh, commercial looking for the neighbors. So I, well, I would, you can get I would a, ask that if you could specify a you know, warmer light. color. Yeah. Yeah. They, they make all kinds of things. That yeah. Mean, I know. I'm just uh, throwing it out there. Okay. Uh, good. Yeah. Thank you. I we'll we'll submit all the specs with the lighting. But you, you're you're right, Mr. Rud, uh, Rudloff. There um, there's different temperatures of the light, and the lower the temperature, the warmer it is. So there's 2,700 and 3,000 Kelvin that right. is a yellower light, yeah. and the ones you're thinking of are like 5,000 Kelvin, which is almost yeah. like an operating room brightness. Mm -hmm. And we understand we're in a residential enough section here. The the light color wants to be more of a, of a warmer yellow and also kind of uniform too you, you you don't want to see some white and some yellow you kind of want to just see a general uh color you know, uniform color in the light sources so you we'll have that all we'll do a lighting spec to show all the lighting the locations and all of that um it's it is more of a it's going to feel more of a, like a residential lighting kind of project than a commercial project where you might have lights on poles and all that other kind of stuff this will this right. will keep this will be kept down 
Okay, well, you have uh, some lodging orders there to uh, to take care of, and uh, if you want, if you can get those all resolved, perhaps by the next meeting, we could uh, Danielle could possibly put together a conditional approval, and then we can uh, take a look at it at our next meeting. Perfect. Okay. Great. And I want to thank, thank everybody that came and commented, Sherry and Phyllis. Thank you very much because being right there, it's important for us to hear from you um, because there may be things going on that need to be addressed, and so we thank you very much for your input. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We do appreciate it. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for thank listening. You. Okay. Absolutely. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks Sherry. We're always happy to hear from you. So, um, and thank you, Thaddeus, for your your input as well in your clarification of the elevations and so forth. Oh, oh, thank you all. I appreciate it. And have a good holiday. We'll see you on the other side. It sounds. All right. Thanks, sir. All right. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Wait. but the, the, pub, the next um, date for the public hearing and the time, I'm sorry, Debbie, is that what you were going to say? Yes. yes. <laughs> Do you we'll need to continue it. Uh, our next meeting is January 5th, and I believe we already have a public hearing scheduled for 8 o'clock. Um, so we can do this. We can do it at 7.30. We could do it at 8.30 or 9. I don't know what your preference would be. Um, um, What's the 8 o'clock, Danielle? Yeah, that's uh, the question. 303 Main Street, they're looking at some changes to their restaurant operation. Um, why don't we try to sneak this in before, Warren, if it's, if it's you know, just getting a decision out, yeah. unless there's something major that happens, and then we can continue. Yeah, well, so let's schedule them for 7.30, and then we can always duck. I agree with you, Chris, completely. Let's, uh, let's uh, schedule them for 7.30, and if it turns out to be a simple one, fine. If we run into issues, um, you know, we'll bring them back. Exactly. Exactly. We have to, we'll do that. So, so I agree with that. Let's do that. So that would be, um, what's the date again? Nanette, Kim? January 5th. January 5th at 7.30. Be early and we'll, uh, we'll try to take care of this. Okay. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. gentlemen. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. Okay, <clears throat> let's uh, go, okay, let me go back to my agenda here, <clears throat> see what we got, um, okay, uh, okay, that takes care of most of our, our business business. Oh, do you have to vote on me again? Yes, yeah, so we do, so we're going to do that right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the discussion will. I know. I think the discussion will come mostly from Danielle. She said that uh, Barbara recommended that we actually do a motion and do a vote. Is that correct? Um, yes, and that we place it on an agenda beforehand. So okay, so it's on our agenda. So um, um, if we could, I would entertain a motion to uh, um, choose um, um, for vice chairman that we choose Chris. So do we have some of your motion from? Uh, I do. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to nominate Chris Hayden as Vice Chair of the CPC. Okay, do I have a second for that? Mr. Pierce, I second. Okay, are there any further nominations? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And let the record show uh, four in favor, no opposed. And uh, Chris, you are officially the Vice Chairman now. <laughs> and thank you very much for agreeing to do it. So. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, yeah. No problem, David. Thank you. Over the years, you know, I have to say over the years, Chris has done a lot of work for this board in many different ways, in many different capacities. So he's, uh, he's a valuable asset to this board. There's no question about it. So, uh, okay. Um, discussion to notify the select board of our vacancy. Um, is this something that we need to... Uh, vote on or we just have to we just have to concur that we need to notify them um yes i think we, we should take a vote um to um accept the resignation um not so much to accept the resignation <laughs> but to notify the select board of the vacancy uh, left by bill balavance's seat mm -hmm. um and to recommend or that the seat be filled by appointment in the interim okay your your audio is a little messed up just okay. so you know Sorry, can you hear me better? No, we can hear you, but it's got crackling and stuff in the background. Okay, sorry. I don't know what it is. Nothing you are doing. 
it something my family's doing? No. no, no I should, okay. It's, it's electronic. A little crackle in the background, like you know, like your microphone's got has a problem or something. So anyway, okay. Um, uh, there is okay. a motion, Ryan. Okay, you have a motion to do the Ryan. Could you look at the motions and see if you can Yes, sir. I move the community planning commission vote to notify the select board of the vacancy of the CPC creator of Bill Valvance's resignation and to recommend to the select board that the CP filled by appointment in the interim. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? So um, I do want to recognize Rich Walner and Vincent Studo, who are, who are also from the board of select board. We always, we've never got this much attention in the past, so we really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> You're but still the, muted there, Rich. Somebody from the board. All right, we'll use your thumb. <laughs> well, Vincent, you've been pretty reliable. I, I, and I thank you for, for, for being here. For, for, uh, it also helps for you to be able to hear that what we're doing um, in a case like this. So we have a motion and a second to notify the board of selectmen. If there's no further discussion, I'll, I'll, uh, is it uh, all in favor? Please say aye. 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 Opposed. Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. And so we will officially notify the board. And we'll be looking, um, and just so for the sake of our two selectmen who are here, just to explain, we, we really would like to, um, um, as soon as possible, because it really inhibits our ability to make decisions if we are missing just one member, because a lot of the stuff we do requires four votes. And when we only have four people, we can't afford to lose a single person or we can't uh, service the public in the, in the manner that we're supposed to. So we really need that, that fifth member. So that's why we're um, uh, moving forward as quickly as we can to fill that seat. Has, um, it, has, it, has there been an ad placed? No, we had to notify the selectmen first and now we can put, oh. now we can put it out. Okay. Vincent, you a, attend, attend, yeah, yeah. Chair Pierce, thank you. Um, do we... I think Mr. Wallen just commented. Do we have anyone that you're looking at to appoint? Not to, not to, not directly. We we do uh, kind of uh, put an ad out, and we do, and we've got you know at one time we put an ad out for both people, and we had uh, we had four or five highly qualified applicants. It was a tough mm -hmm. choice. So there are some Is that good twenty people. years ago, Warren. No, it wasn't that long ago. Um, <laughs> when we when we lost them, we had to replace them. We got we got we had some really really good applicants. So. So, uh, so you know, I'm I'm hopeful that we get some of those, maybe one or two of those people decide to come back and 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 fill that position. So, we'll look we'll we'll look forward to that. So, um, we'll notify the selectmen, Danielle, and then we'll be able to uh, place an ad. That that would be correct. Yes, uh, Karen said that they're ready to send an ad in for publication okay. Thursday. Now we have an ad that was prepared prior when we did this once before, and we've just kind of updated it. Um, and so we're, we're, we're all set to, uh, to move ahead. Okay, good. Um, we have uh, many ZBAs. No, we do not. Okay. Ryan, would you make a motion for our December 1st meeting uh, minutes? They're not done. Yes, They're not oh, done yet. They're not? No. Okay. Good She's thing I didn't slacking. start under those, huh? <laughs> <Did he slack? laughs> All right. Uh, well, other than our planning administrator update, I think we're uh, unless there's uh, anything else. Um, over to you, Danielle. Did you have something? Pardon? I was. I, I just want to say something at the end of the meeting. That's all. Okay. Okay. Um, tell me if you want me to stop if my audio is too. Bad. I'll, no, we'll I'll go until you tell me to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, um, I'll try to stick to the highlights here. Um, so we have uh, TEC. Um, we're getting them under contract. They're the ones who are going to be doing the Main Street redesign. Um, okay. John Clipfell and I have been working on uh, getting that contract going. Um, they have worked with Abacus before in the past, and Abacus uh, decided to reach out to them to discuss what they've been working on to be sure that it dovetails with what TEC will be working on, and they, they met. Um, so apparently that went well, and they're on the same page about their vision for Main Street. Um, so we'll expect Abacus to work that into um, what they've been working on. Um, I have submitted a capital request because the Central Street uh, sidewalk continues to be a struggle. Um, we 
if if you don't agree with it, I, you know, I can always withdraw it. But um, the Complete Streets program will pay for up to 400000 of the next segment, but they require the town to pay almost all the police detail work and construction management. And in the end, um, John Clipthall and I decided to ask for a capital request um, for, um, I think it ended up being $170,000 to supplement the construction costs to do um, Park Street to Quimby Road. Um, we'll see what happens. Obviously, there's not a lot of money to work with this year, so I'm not feeling that hopeful about it, but I did submit the request. Well, um, you know, I think it's okay to submit that request now. <clears throat> and even if it doesn't go anywhere, um, we'll bring it, we can bring it back because we will, we will use it primarily. If it looks like it's not going anywhere, we're still going to use it as an educational tool to let people know what's going on and what we need to, to make this happen. Uh, and I think there's a lot of support. I think there's a lot of support in the Central Street area for a sidewalk to get down to the park and back safely. So, so um, it's likely the meeting may get may get a few extra people from that area to help it out. So, so um, um, we'll uh, you know. So I'm not. So I think yes, you should leave it in. And yes, if it doesn't work out well, it still gives us that opportunity to do education as far as what's going on with that project. So that's fine. Anybody have any comments on that? I agree with you, Juan. Yeah, yeah. Let's just got to start somewhere. And that, yeah, then it's exactly, a, exactly. You know. <clears throat> okay. Next, go ahead, Danielle. Sorry. Oh sure. No. Um, we are anticipating for town meeting a couple of things. Um, citizens' petition, most likely, uh, for the turkey farm and the adjacent properties, um, which wouldn't be unexpected. Um, I haven't heard much about it yet, but the owner did get in touch uh, recently to inquire about that. Um, so I would expect that to be on in June and we'll be asked to schedule a public hearing for it at some point in the spring. I'll what is it they on. want to do? What's the petition for? Um, to rezone it uh, from residence A to industrial office. Okay, okay. Well, that, that, yeah, we kind of knew that was going to happen. Right. I'll keep you posted if I get information about it, but right okay. now that's all, right. all I know. Um, we have three, uh, sorry, no, two new um, public hearing applications that are either in or expected to be in soon. Uh, 303 Main Street is looking to change their restaurant, add a brewery for service in the restaurant and retail sales of their beer. Um, they will be coming in uh, at the January 5th meeting and then we're expecting Pulte to make an application um, to ask for some additional units in their development. Okay, so um, the brewery, you said retail sales. Yes. Um, if I remember correctly, in order to do retail sales outside of that, outside of the, um, outside of the restaurant. In other words, if you, are they talking retail sales inside their restaurant selling the beer to the public or selling it outside to the because I mean I think there's a whole different set of rules and laws and and the other thing would be um, I think that would have to get looked at closely in that particular case would be there isn't a higher water usage business in the world than a brewery they use more water than any 10 businesses added together which means not only do they have to they have that supply of water available to them, which means the water department's got to say, yeah, we got a couple million extra gallons a day. Or, um, uh, and also uh, when the water comes out the other end, is the septic system, is the facilities that exist there are sufficient to handle the outflow. Mm -hmm. But I think there are some issues there. I mean, it's one thing if they had a, a small microbrewery and they just did something that they sold inside their restaurant, but if they're going to mass produce, there's a whole other set of laws as far as uh, ABC as well. So, the, you know. Is the restaurant have... going away? Still be a restaurant, but I don't think it's going to be Dos Lobos anymore. Yeah. It'll be a restaurant. Oh. My understanding is that the, 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 um, the function room on the right side is going to become the brewery and the restaurant will stay where it is. And, and so there'll be no more function room. It'll just be, a, it'll be the brewery, but but there is a lot of questions in, 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 in so far as what, what, they can, what they can do as far as uh, from, from um, 
manufacturing from and as far as zoning as far as manufacturing as no, well. they can't manufacture there because it's it, it's not zoned for that i, I know that's, right. what I, that's what i just said right so, so in, in as as zoning and everything else goes it's gonna have to be looked at to see where the line's being drawn there as far as what they're actually doing right i thought their sales were going to be like in-house kind of thing it is. yes in -house. you know so and then uh, it's basically going to be a microbrewery i think warren that space isn't big enough for much more Really, when you think about well, the it. The question is, do, are they, do they going to sell it? Can people carry out? Yes. If they can carry out, then that's a retail sale. Yes, it is a retail sale. So, I mean, I think that that's, that's like a liquor store. <coughs> that's a whole different license. It is, yes. They know what license to pursue. Um, I think in the meantime, though, the discussions I've had with um, building inspector have been that the type of production service and sales that they're doing would not be manufacturing at the level that they're doing it and the amounts that they're doing it, it would be considered yeah. cooking. So even though they're producing to sell, I think similar to the way that <gasps> dressing to sell, like that people can purchase and leave even if they didn't eat at the restaurant. Um, but yes, it's definitely um, a different type of liquor license. I know they need to go to, you know, the so state. Gonna, and again, if they, if they, if you're gonna, it's one thing to manufacture enough of a quantity to to have in your own restaurant, but if you're gonna start selling for carryout, that that's um, um, that adds another whole dimension to it as far as water in and water out. So that's got to be looked at closely. There is, like I said, there's not a larger user of water in the world than a um, than a brewery, a microbrewery. Okay. That would be it for you, or you have more? Let me see. I'm just trying to stick with the big stuff. Um, also, for town meeting, we probably should be prepared. Um, town Council has been working on 5G uh, recommendations for us as far as um, what they're recommending should be a zoning bylaw and a general bylaw. So um, I think we should be planning on that being ready for some action in, in June. Um, well, we'll have to have a public hearing on it, right? Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, I should have recommendations from them soon. So I'm hoping we can set up, you know, either a workshop discussion or another type of meeting for us to have, you know, during the CPC meeting. I think a, I think a workshop would be good. I think a, I think a workshop okay. would be good if we could get some, yeah. a couple of, we did this before when we did cell towers to uh, get an expert or to uh, somebody that we could come in and give us a uh, uh, down to earth explanation of what exactly <gasps> work. So, um, you know, that would be a, uh, I think that'd be the way to go about it. We, we did that with the cell towers and it worked out really well. It made us knowledgeable. We made a lot of good decisions. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to see if we could do that. If you can find somebody or. Um, so, Give us a, his, a 5G class. There you go. There's a, a general law also needs to be done, Danielle? Um, yes. So yeah. that's that's a selectman's purview, right? It will be. Um, so I'm right now collecting the information from town council and their instructions, at least initially, were the select board should pass a policy. Um, there may be a general bylaw also recommended, but that um, zoning will be where some of the restrictions sit. So we should plan for that for town meeting. Right. But yeah, so, so thinking in the the vein of Warren, you know, having that that meeting with uh, a learned person of some sort to explain what five G is for real um, and what's going to happen, maybe we should invite the selectmen to join us. Um, so they're up to speed with us. If they got a, if they've got a, um, you know, have a, a even a policy, you know, or a bylaw, um, yeah, it always that's helps. What did, that's what we did with the cell towers, I think, too. Right. Um, so, so yeah, we should do that same thing again. So it worked well. It did. It did. So let's 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 see if we can facilitate that. Oh. Okay. What else? Um, budget soon. Um, I haven't gotten a request yet, but I know we'll be asked to submit our budget. If you have any thoughts or anything that should be different, um, otherwise I'll just be working on it and I will share it with you before it's submitted. Yeah, um, probably going to just uh, redo last time's budget, but, uh, and, um, are you still going to be looking for money for EDC? So I don't 
know. This is a conversation I, I would like to have with the EDC when we meet in January. Um, we didn't ask for new money this year, but we were allowed to carry over twenty thousand that was left from last year. Yep, yep. Um, we thought we were going to spend it on some of the activity related to the microenterprise loan programs and other business assistance, but actually that ended up getting reimbursed as a COVID expense from the CARES Act. So we haven't touched that money at all. Um, so I would like to talk to them about, I mean, given the restrictions this year, it might be really hard to spend that money, honestly. Right. Um, so I'll talk to them about what they think their needs will be for next year. Yep, maybe we leave that out of the budget and, and we look for our 170000 instead. 170000 Oh, you mean for the capital? <laughs> right, for the capital. Oh. Right. <laughs> we'll give you this if you give us that. <laughs> <laughs> A little quid pro quo here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's pennies. That's pennies for for thousands. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it's good thought though, Warren. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to just trying to get things to move along here. So that's right. So, I'm sorry. That's go right. ahead, Danielle. What 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 else you got? Um, a couple more businesses qualified for the micro enterprise loan, which is good, and a few more businesses are working on it. So it's been slow, but we're, we're giving out the money. Um, yep, um, and I think that's really, that's really the big stuff. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. <clears throat> Anything uh, from anybody else? Uh, we all good? Uh, I think Debbie uh, has us. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Um, I just, I'm going to need all of you to come into the office at some point to sign the plans and the covenants, and I have a couple of other things. So if you could just make some time for me possibly this week and just give me a call ahead of time. Let me know you're coming in. Are you around you tomorrow it, afternoon? You, I should be. If you okay. don't do it tomorrow, you're probably not going to do it on Thursday. Friday might yeah. be a little no, messy I know. too. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday is my day I can plan to get in. What time are you in till, Debbie? Four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Debbie, what time you come in? Tomorrow. I get it. Um, I get in. I've been going in about seven thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't. Wouldn't. <laughs> well, would, why? What time would you be looking? No, at? no. I think it might work out to go morning. Uh, I'll be heading to Worcester around you know ten, ten thirty. So I just you know I can cruise right by there. That would be great. Yes. Okay, I'll text you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, I should just add to that, Debbie. I um, we had the newer version of the covenants, but we're going to use the old signature page because that was what was signed. So I can coordinate with you just to be sure we're signing the right paperwork. Because that okay, yep. And Ryan, will you be able to get in? You you left out, huh? Yes, I'll come by tomorrow, Debbie. I'll I'll shoot you a message. Thank you. Yep. Warren, At least you weren't. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I go in all the time, so. Yeah, you can, you can show, you'll show up with a front end loader. You'll get in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and not much is going to stop me from getting in. That's and, right. So, um, I know this wasn't on this week's agenda, but I just want to follow quickly on uh, last week's conversation with Abacus. Um, I, I did talk to a couple developers within the last week um, and, and kind of got similar feedback from both. And, and what they had to say, what, one of which was uh, you know, WS that did Linfield Marketplace, um, and another guy who's kind of not, not with somebody right now, but affiliated with some major developers as well. And they both had the same feedback, which was, you know, given the current market climate, that, you know, for, for something with a lot of, you know, what they called potential pain points, uh, it'd be difficult to kind of get a developer to the table at this stage uh, and they both kind of had the same feedback which was the more of those pain points that we can identify and, and alleviate and or provide answers to the clearer picture we're going to be able to give to developers to solicit proposals so you know specifically what they were talking about was obviously utilities you know is there is there enough electrical supply to the to the site what would the upgrades have to be you know, if there is any upgrades, would the town be involved in those? Obviously, we know about the package plan and obviously any advanced information regarding potential sewage, uh, natural gas, you know, anything anything utility related um, was the first one. The, se the second obviously was, um, you know, site conditions, civil site conditions, soils. I'm sure some of this is probably 
on record anyways, but soils from the sites, anything regarding that that could, you know, give them more information as a starting point. And then the last would be, you know, the, the, the level of interest and, you know, kind of a, an outside shot anyway, of what we think the, the, you know, acquisition costs would be for potential properties to do the project. Yeah, the, um, there's been soil testing on the uh, Heffron property and, and the new septic system was put into the trailer parks uh, not that long ago. Um, so you got to stop and shop. Yeah, it's got, yeah, so what I was gonna say is that in, in the, I mean, stop shop just did a repair not that long ago either, uh, three or four years. But anyway, there's, there's sufficient uh, test hole data throughout that entire site there, Ryan. So that's one I, we can probably take right off the table. Yeah, so it sounds like to me it's probably a combination of having a, you know, a civil firm pull together existing records and maybe kind of fill in some blanks, but, yeah, you know, paint a, a comprehensive picture of site conditions and, right. and utility uh, access, availability, costs, et cetera, um, to kind of fill in the blanks and give, is, as they both said, the, you know, the buildings, the density, that's, you know, easy back of the napkin numbers to run for them construction wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Variables in the site conditions, the utility costs, and the land costs. Okay. So good information. Yeah, I think that's valuable information to pass on to advocates to let them address those issues in their presentations. Or as much as they can. I know I know, you know, some of the stuff is stuff we'd have to work on, but but uh, but they but th this would give them another another piece of uh, information to, to put into their puzzle. So, so thank you, Ryan, very much. That was good. Okay, anybody else? Anything? Okay, then if that's it for tonight, I'm going to adjourn. Uh, well, actually, I started to ask uh, Vincenzo and, and, and Rich if they had any questions for the board or comments at this time. Okay, good. We, thank, we certainly thank you both for coming. Hey, Rich, so, can I call you after? Mr. Walner, he's frozen. Yeah. Yeah, sure. No. Call me on my cell. All right, yep. All right. I, got, cell, I got your cell. I'll call you after. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Great. Okay. Um, then I thank you all for coming and we'll have a good night and uh, a Merry Christmas to all since we won't see you till afterwards. <laughs> Wait, don't forget, December 21st, we have to attend the select board meeting for the, yeah. the EDC. Right. Do we oh, have yes. time yet? Uh, I don't have a time yet. Okay. Even today, it was still TBD. I will let you know as soon as possible. We just need three of us. So join okay. appointments. And um, I'm expecting there to be some discussion about Carpenter Drive. Um, okay. Right. Which I can manage. But I just wanted to remind you of that. Sorry about that. Okay. Yep. Yep. We can do that. All right. We'll bring the eggnog. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> little eggnog. We'll egg yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, then, a good night to all.